Hey everybody, welcome to No DQ and a video right here on NoDQ.com as well as the YouTube channel and No DQ and a videos affiliate ringsignews.com. Got your questions here from spring.me slash Aaron Rift. Let's get started today with the first one from Awesomes W69514. What do you think of Brock Lesnar possibly walking out on the company before WrestleMania 31? What does this mean for the WrestleMania main event? Finally, it is clear that The Undertaker's streak was wasted. Well, whatever is going on between WWE and Brock Lesnar, and right now it's believed that it's some sort of financial situation. It's not a matter of Brock Lesnar not wanting to lose to Roman Reigns or some ridiculous theory that Roman Reigns failed a drug test. Uh, whatever issue there is, my guess is it will be worked out and Brock Lesnar will be at WrestleMania. He's still under contract. I don't see him breaching his contract because he has a financial dispute with WWE. I would be shocked if something happened to the WrestleMania main event and it wasn't Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. Now, what does this mean for Brock Lesnar in the future? Clearly, there's something going on between WWE and Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar was advertised for Raw this week. And he was there, and he didn't appear on the show. Something's going on. We don't know all the details yet, but my guess is cooler heads will prevail. Business is business. They will work things out, and Brock Lesnar will defend the title at WrestleMania 31. Now, where does he go from there? I got this question here from the Dark One One. Hey, Aaron, please answer in video. Do you see WWE letting Brock win at WrestleMania to keep him in WWE? Thanks. I would be shocked if Brock Lesnar retained the WWE title at WrestleMania. And even if WWE, even if things were fine with Brock Lesnar and WWE and Brock Lesnar signed a new deal with WWE, I still do not see him retaining the title at WrestleMania. I think that that would be a bad business decision. It's time for Brock Lesnar to lose the title. And WWE's whole long-term plan was for Lesnar to and The Undertaker's streak, and then have Roman Reigns beat Brock Lesnar and establish Roman Reigns as the top guy in WWE. This is what I've been talking about for months now. WWE has this plan, and I don't see them changing things. Even if things work out with Brock Lesnar and he stays with the company, um, and some are thinking maybe he could, he could retain the title as a way for WWE to keep him happy, I don't really think that Brock Lesnar cares about being WWE champion. I think he cares about getting what he feels he deserves in terms of payment. Uh, you know, he's a businessman. So I don't, I don't think that that's going to be a factor. And even if Roman Reigns continues to get booed or whatever, and fans don't react all that positively to him, I think that WWE is going to stick with their guns. They've gone this far now. They've put Daniel Bryan aside. They're focusing on Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar. I think WWE is going to go all the way with it and hope that um, Roman Reigns catches on and will be successful as WWE champion. Got this question here from Zombie Lives. With Brock Lesnar reportedly clashing heads with Vince over his contract with the WWE, I read that his new contract would include him being able to fight in the UFC still. Do you think that that would be good publicity? I see it as a good thing, but doubt Vince will. I would be very surprised if WWE allowed Brock Lesnar to pursue UFC. And I really don't think Brock Lesnar can do both at the same time. If he's going to go back to UFC, you know, that's something you really need to uh, focus all of your attention on. And uh, with WWE, it would just be too much. Uh, you know, you need to do one or the other. And, uh, you know, there's still a lot of questions about Brock Lesnar's health. Uh, you know, with his age, can he really go back and perform in UFC even though uh, uh, he's he's healthier than he was during the end of his UFC run? You know, age is a factor. And, uh, you know, I, I just don't know if that's something that he wants to do. If he can continue to get a good deal with WWE, uh, you know, one would think he'll stay with WWE and continue to work on a part-time basis and uh, collect a good paycheck. But right now, you know, clearly something's going on. Uh, but... I don't think WWE will go in that direction. I think if anything, they'll they'll pay him what he wants, but I don't see them giving him some, some kind of offer where he can work UFC in addition to WWE. And, you know, WWE likes to publicly say that UFC is not competition, but come on now, they're not going to 
allow him to work with UFC while still under WWE contract. All right, got this question here from jkin 62 Speaking as someone who was a casual fan in 2008, 2009, I gotta ask, was Jeff Hardy as over with the internet fans as much as the casual fans? I'm curious since he seemed universally loved like Daniel Bryan is now. Yeah, Jeff Hardy was always really popular with the internet fans. Any guy who goes out there and takes a lot of risks is going to be over with the internet. Uh, Jeff Hardy was no exception. He was a guy who, like Daniel Bryan, was universally loved. Maybe there was a small group of fans out there that resented Jeff Hardy for being, you know, too kid friendly. Sometimes that can happen, but um, you know, I think for the most part, fans just had a lot of respect for Jeff Hardy. I think I think some people lost respect for him when he went to TNA. Uh, some felt that he was throwing his career away. And then when the whole Victory Road debacle went down, you know, I think a lot of fans were disappointed in Jeff Hardy, and some people did lose respect for him. But uh, during his run in WWE, I mean, he he was popular with just about everyone. Kids, adults, old people, men, women. I mean, Jeff Hardy was truly one of those guys that was universally loved. All right, got this question here from Slow Speed Net. Please be frank, Aaron. Do you personally like Roman Reigns and would take him over Brian? Why or why not? Keep up the good work. Well, for me personally, I have no problem with Roman Reigns getting pushed to the top. I think from a business standpoint, WWE has the right idea. They've just executed it very poorly. They've made a lot of mistakes with Roman Reigns, uh, you know, pushing him too quickly, perhaps, not putting him in enough high profile matches, letting him earn the respect of the fans, letting him be established as a singles competitor. You know, WWE rushed things a bit with him, and then the whole thing with the promos, him coming out, doing the Looney Tunes gig, and um, just stuff like that, I think, did a lot of damage to his character. Um, you know, I, 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 in my opinion, if I was booking Roman Reigns, I would have just had him go out there, be an ass kicker, uh, let him have some memorable pay-per-view matches to build him up and, uh, you know, make it so the fans respect him and feel that this is a guy who has paid his dues and deserves to be in the main event. And um, when Daniel Bryan came back, that was another problem because Daniel Bryan was really over. And, uh, you know, people wanted to see that story be told with Daniel Bryan making his big comeback and winning the title that he never lost. And, uh, you know, Roman Reigns had lost a lot of momentum. Uh, but WWE was insistent on pushing Roman Reigns. They just let, they just made a lot of mistakes with the guy. Uh, and I don't know if they can salvage it now. It might be too little too late. But I certainly don't have a problem with Roman Reigns, uh, you know, as a character and the things that he's done. Uh, you know, I think he's a very strong performer. Maybe not ready for the main event. Uh, but at some point, you got to try to go with the guy. You got to take a chance. And uh, WWE needs to make new stars. So you can really make a valid argument either way about Roman Reigns, but definitely uh, it would have been nice if WWE uh, utilized him better and uh, you know pushed him in a way that would get him more fans, not fewer fans. All right, this one comes from Bo Shade Twelve. Hey, Aaron, what did you think of Paul Heyman saying Roman Reigns could beat The Rock, Hogan, Stone Cold, and Bruno? Seemed way too over the top, in my opinion. Thanks. Well, I, I totally agree with that. I think that on one hand, you want to put over Roman Reigns as a beast and a guy who can uh, tangle and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with just about anybody in WWE history. But, uh, you know, when Paul Heyman was out there saying this, um, you know, I really felt his nose growing a mile wide. I mean, it was a bit ridiculous. Uh, you know, I just didn't believe it. And uh, yes, Paul Heyman's supposed to be a heel and he's supposed to lie, but... Uh, in this case, we're supposed to believe him when he says something like this because if he really thinks the babyface has is, is got that much talent that he can beat any top name in the business, you're supposed to believe that. But I don't think too many people bought into that when he said it. To me, it didn't really have any credibility. Once again, if WWE had gone a different way with Roman Reigns, um, if they had him in a series of pay-per-view matches beating all the top heels... Uh, it would have more credibility. I think the problem is that, you know, they they uh, broke up the shield. Roman Reigns was getting pushed for a couple months uh, somewhat. I mean, he had one or two pay-per-view matches. Uh, I think he was in Money in the Bank. And then he got hurt. And he was gone for three months. He came back. 
he's immediately put into the Royal Rumble, and they start giving him the lame promos. And, uh, you know, that, that was the wrong way to do it. I mean, that, that's the bottom line with Roman Reigns. All right, got this question here from the Dark One One. It's two questions in one video. Hey, Aaron, please answer a video. Do you see John Cena winning the title for a 15th or even 16th time before he retires in WWE? Also, when he does come back, do you see him, or when he does retire, do you see him sticking around doing something backstage? Or do you think he would have a Stone Cold or Shawn Michaels type of role when he retires? I think that... In all likelihood, John Cena will probably be WWE Champion again. I know I've gotten this question many times about John Cena uh, beating Ric Flair's record. Uh, would not surprise me at all if it happens. And my gut feeling is John Cena will continue to work in WWE in a physical capacity as long as his body holds up. Uh, will that be five years? Will that be 10 years? Will that be 15 years? I mean, anything's possible, but... I don't see John Cena just walking away from his dream job. He loves WWE. Uh, you know, it's what he's passionate about. I see him continuing to wrestle as long as he possibly can. And uh, when it's over, when his career is over, I absolutely see him uh, remaining with the company in some capacity. I mean, you just know with this guy, you know, that this is uh, what he was born to do. This is what he loves uh, you know, just like Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan never really retired. He always tried to stay involved. Uh, and when he could no longer wrestle, you know, he would be the GM. You know, he would be uh, part of the creative. Uh, you know, he would do all sorts of different things. He would be the goodwill ambassador. Uh, you know, I definitely see uh, John Cena going down a similar path as Hulk Hogan. All right, that'll wrap it up for this edition of No DQ and a Video. Thanks, as always, for watching. Subscribe at YouTube.com slash No DQ C-A-W. NoDQ.com has you covered for WrestleMania. I will be there in the Bay Area to cover the Hall of Fame, WrestleMania 31, and Raw the next night. Uh, so stay tuned for all that, and I will see you guys next time for more NoDQ&A video.